Hello, everyone, and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Monday, May 15th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember, everyone, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? Really tired. I was just asleep, like, not even 15 minutes ago. Yeah? Did you yeah, sleep last night? I did, and I slept past my alarms, uh this morning and i slept past my alarm by like 10 minutes at lunch i'm just really tired today you getting sick i mean I, my face was all hurting yesterday i thought that was just from allergies but maybe i'm really bad about getting sick you know well i mean it, is, it still tiny. could be allergies it's the right time of year yeah <clears throat> so Either way, though, glad you're here. Glad you're not dead. Shit, that makes me want to... Well, I mean... I also have this delicious beverage. What is it? A 99-cent energy drink. It makes me feel like I'm drinking malt liquor. Is it not Venom? No, it is the Venom one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just got to build up that kidney stone a bit more. It's the... I do... This, this last couple weekends, I've just been binging energy drinks. Why? Because I'm awful. Because you hate yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you know it. Um, But it's the yellow ones, the killer taipan, and it's delicious because it's mango, and it tastes like sour gummy worms when it's chilled. Yep. And it's really junk for you. I don't know. It looks very healthy to me. No. Nope. Yeah, like, look at these, like, healthy things. It's got... Dude, like, you thought you needed riboflavin? This has got 200%. You thought you needed niacin? This has got 200%. This has got vit vitamin B6 at 200% and vitamin B12 at 200%. Niacin's really good for you. You want to know why? Why? Because it helps um, get... Flush your system of drugs, essentially. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, and, so, and everything else just gives you energy. Ener energy. Hey, this gives you energy, too. What? Oh, I mean everything else in the uh, drink. Case. Yeah. I just don't know why they put it at 200%, because, like, amps have, like, 10% niacin. Because why not, man? This is 200, so, I mean, you know. I mean, it's got to serve a purpose. It does. It does serve a purpose. This show is in no way sponsored by Venom or any other energy drink, such as NOS. But it can be. <laughs> Let us know. Anyway, all right, let's get into some shit. No oh, okay. shit, missed the button. Ten. I acted as a man to get work until I was accused of rape. This was submitted by Dancing Greg to R Not the Onion. So this is actually a, a BBC just story article. Like there isn't any actual like yeah. news. With I, this. I read this. I read this earlier. It, it's neat though. It, it's about this woman who lives where again? Zimbabwe. Uh -huh. No. Tanzania. Just, there we go. That's pretty racist. Yeah, it was Tanzania because she had to, she wanted to go work in the mines to um get Tanzanite. To, yeah, to uh farm Tanzanite. And but only men were allowed in there. So she walked and talked and dressed like a dude and you know threw her weight around and got a job in there and found a massive vein of Tanzanite and became a very wealthy person that hired a bunch of other miners and stuff to go out and do the mining and all that good jazz and uh then someone tried to threaten her with rape and sue her, and uh, she her went. Name, she she went by the the name like Uncle something. Uh, it, yeah, it her last name. Uh, Uncle like Hussein. Uncle, yeah, Uncle Hussein. And she went, um, well, no, I, I I can't rape you. And then they're like, yeah, you did. You raped me. And they're like, all right, well, I'm gonna go to a physician, and that physician's gonna tell you that I'm a woman. <laughs> and the physician's like, yep, yep, that's a woman. And they're like, wait, how long have you been a woman this whole time? You've been our boss for like eight years. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This is like a modern age Mulan where it didn't have almost anything to deal with fighting. No, I mean fighting for your spot, I guess. Yeah, I mean there's fighting for, for your your freedom because, you know, you just got accused of rape. Mm-hmm. But, oh. I mean, and then after that they're like, well, wasn't you. And they moved on, but she's doing quite well. And like, it's a very interesting now story. Now she's married. Yep. If you, if you want to read it, it was a good read about you know the things that they had to go through in order to actually achieve it because it was a, it was a rough time. Yeah, like now she's married. It was it was hard for her at first, 
after she came out as being a woman that um it was it was hard for people to see her as a woman. People still call her uncle to this day. Mm-hmm. So it was it was initially very hard for for people to to like well for her to to try and and pursue any form of relationship with with a, another individual that was a dude. Right. Because you know it's but, not like you're a dude. homosexuality is so so open in other uh, other countries. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you, you know you can legally be a homosexual in Tanzania. Uh, well, I don't know, and like she didn't actually look for a husband until after it was revealed that she was a woman. So, mm-hmm. and even then, uh, it was his initiative. So, yep. I, th- I think he might be a Tanzanite digger. That's not funny. Why not? It's, it's not it's not funny why not she does she doesn't deal in gold i, I don't care what's wrong it's not, i'll oh. kill you do it do it motherfucker ear to ear motherfucker <laughs> nine dinosaur asteroid hit worst oh, hold on, possible hold on. what you want to know why she can't be a tanzanite digger why because it doesn't fit the, the song scheme that's fair now i'm saying she a tanzanite digger Tansy, slow, sh- short. Did you know down. that song was originally written for another person, and it was written for a female to sing? Really? Yeah, and originally it was supposed to be. Uh, now I'm not saying I'm a gold digger, but I'm messing with now. You know, broke. Huh. Interesting. Um, but the person was like, I don't want to read that because that's, or I don't want to sing that because that's that's offensive and I don't like that. And Kanye West, being Kanye <laughs> be West, like, was like, I'll do it. He was like, Nah, fuck that. That's a good song. I'll do it. <laughs> and anyway, it, and he's like, proved it, but it's like. The context is different, coming from a different gender, so I don't know. Dinosaur, di- dinosaur, 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 hell astro- yeah, my dude. <laughs> dinosaur asteroid hit the worst possible place. This is this was submitted by an utensil to our world news. Dinosaur sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a really good anime. Anyway, so they they went down and they started digging up sections of stone and stuff of looking at where that asteroid hit some 66 million years ago or however long it was. Yeah, 66 million. And what they found is that, one, the asteroid wasn't very big. It didn't hit very hard or anything like that. The reason that the dinosaurs died from it is specifically where it hit. It hit in a very shallow section of the ocean and that particular section of the ocean was all of the d- ground right there was n- almost nothing but gypsum, which is extremely deadly if you inhale it. So what happened is, is that when it, it put some, it put a bunch of gypsum into the air, and then that killed mm. almost everything in that immediate area, which then completely offset the entire ecosystem, which made everything die. That asteroid gypped him. God, Nathan, why? It's a pun. You're the worst. Ah, oh, damn it. I forgot to get it because I was distracted by going to the store and stuff. I'll see if I can Google it and stuff. Cause there's a soundbite that I really need to get because I realized that we just need to have it. Yeah, is it don't get eliminated? Yeah, we need that one too. Uh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> sorry, I did. Uh, this. We need this. Now come the pack oh, wait, no. You, you can't hear it. Shit, because it's in the goddamn fucking computer. Get destroyed, loser. <laughs> I'll try to pull it up on the iPad while I'm distracted with talking and stuff. Uh, Are you distracted? I mean, I'm doing everything. Anyways, so, so it, it seems like the dinosaur hit the dinosaur asteroid hit in the worst possible place, right? Yep, and to the point that if it would have hit a minute earlier or a minute later because of the Earth's rotation, that the dinosaurs might have been completely fine. So the only reason why all these dinosaurs are dead and we have combustible oil and everything is because the space rock hit the Earth at just the right spot. Bullseye. Wow. Yep. No, this, this is what we need, by the way. That's motherfucking statistic probability right there. Now come the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Heads back and laugh. Heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! Ah, huh. <laughs> oh, I fucking love that. That's amazing. Yeah, I have to remember. That's Georgia the Jungle, right? Yeah, yeah, totally is. And I have to remember to get that afterwards because one of our later topics, I, I, I read the, the, the friggin' headline and went, and my brain went, now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? <laughs> it's fucking, oh God. Uh, we need that in Jungle Graham. 
Yep. I, I, I'll have to try and get some of these after. Jungle Gram! What does it mean? Are you okay there? Yeah, I love that that bit where he's sitting there playing the fucking drums. Sure. That movie was so good. I'm, I miss Brendan Fraser. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Although, I saw the new trailer for The Mummy today. It doesn't look that bad. Um, yeah, if you don't mind Tom Cruise. I don't mind Tom Cruise. He, 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 he does his one thing well. I mean, yeah, I guess. He, he's, I don't know. Something about him just kind of irks me. He, he's good at being Ethan Hunt? Wait, what? What's Hawk? Hawk. Hawk. There you go. Sure. Whatever. Anyway. Eight. Putin says world needs to talk to North Korea and not threaten it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought of something that was really bad, and it's a really bad joke, and would I'm not going to say it. Would you like to share it with the class? No. No? <laughs> no. Will it get you expelled? Yeah, it, uh, this is submitted by a bit of fresh air to our world news. So, Putin came out today at a, mo a meeting in Moscow um, and to speak about how they are opposed f to any other countries acquiring nuclear weapons and that instead of trying to threaten or shut down North Korea, we should just talk to them like, you know, world leader neighbors are supposed to do. Cause, and they, they went on to say they understand why the concern is there about North Korea testing missiles, but they don't feel like the missiles presented any threat to them. And so all of this drastic response only causes additional conflict. If you would instead be like, yeah, what are you guys doing? Instead of being like, bitch, quit it. Then maybe you wouldn't have as many problems. It works in child care. Yeah. And I mean, so, I mean he's if you view a, North Korea as a giant child, let's do it. Exactly. It should work perfectly fine without any uh, problems whatsoever. See, it's like, I kind of agree with this. I agree that we should be talking to them to avoid conflict whatsoever. But it's hard to be tolerant of them when they're continuously doing stuff like this. Well, and also that they're nonstop talking shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, even then, like, 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 I guess, I guess it's 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 bad to compare it to children because like children don't. It's, all right, I'm sorry, parents, but children do not create as much of a of of an of a mess as nuclear arms does. <laughs> all right, looks like a bomb went off in here. No, it didn't. Yeah, so like, we don't want to escalate the situation too far to the point where even talking will not put it back down. Sure. Well, and the other thing is, though, is, I mean, like, well, now, right now, we're at the point where the leader of America is a giant child, so maybe we do need some sort of play date. But with that, I mean... I don't know. They're also over there, like, this is like the, the angry neighbor that you don't get along with and don't like, who every time you see them, they threaten to burn your house to the ground and serve your parents to you in a stew. You're like, bro, stop threatening me with a good time, all right? Yeah, it's like, it, if they were just, like, trying to develop missile technology, it'd be one thing. But they're also like, you know what else we need to do? We need to be like, we're developing these missiles to blow you up, because fuck you. And it's like, hey, hey now, hey, 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 simmer down. Just put your dick back in your pants. It's not that impressive anyway. They're that drunk friend that you take to a party. You're like, all right, you know, you're not, you're not such an awful individual. And then when they get to the party, they drink too much, and and they uh, <laughs> and they pull out their dick, um, and they kind of whip it around, you know, and they're just like waving it, and they're just like, you don't shut up, America. I'm gonna stick this dick in your mouth. And America's like, bruh. You know, it's rude to talk about Buchler that way. <laughs> Especially considering he was a soldier, so you're just telling him to put his dick in his own mouth. Exactly. Fucking, um, Kendall's like, how many teachers are needed to be in, uh, in ratio to a Trump? Uh, and this is in reference to, um, most childcare. You, usually, uh, depending on the age, you have to be one individual to ten children. Um, I don't know how many teachers are needed to be in ratio for Trump. Well, here's the other thing, though. I mean, if we he's just... kind of like he's kind of like the God Emperor, where you, you just have a bunch of people sitting around serving him and like pump, pumping him and everything. There's like hundreds of millions of people sitting there serving the God Emperor and and being devoured to him. Those are all pretty much like 
you know, your your teachers. So like it, it would have to be enough to subst- subst- like serve the God Emperor. So like, shit, a lot of teachers. You make me sad. Well, and on top of that, like, I mean, if you want to just make a very uh, sad comparison with the money he's trying to take out of the Department of Education, it's like, what, like 66000 or something like that? I mean, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh, that's good. I didn't need a teacher, so I made him go away. Betsy didn't that one coming. Oh, that's real bad. That was, that was a stretch, man. Oh, oh, Seven. Microsoft president blasts NSA for its role in WannaCry computer ransom attack. This was submitted by a temporary creature to our news. I'd been getting notifications about this at work, but I had no idea what the hell it was until now. Yeah, dude. No, I uh, I read about a little bit of it on on um on the news this morning. So like the, over the weekend, it was like Friday or something. A lot of a lot of places around the world, a lot of big like government places uh, were hit with ransomware that would pop up and it would be like, hey, you have like seven days to pay $300. In Bitcoin. Yeah, in Bitcoin. Uh, or, you know, the shit ain't gonna fly and, and you won't be able to access your, your uh, computer and whatnot. I believe it actually just completely wipes the computer. Oh yeah, something like that. And so people are like, oh, alright, let's 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 start paying. And there's like 50,000 people, or uh, $50,000 uh, worth, um, well I guess just of, of Bitcoin. Um, has been given to them. But at the same time, a guy accidentally stopped the entire thing. Yep, because um, the site that you paid it through wasn't registered, so he registered the domain, and then he went, sweet, all of your stuff just falls right in here, so they're not going to take anything from you anymore. But the problem is is that the, the, this exploit was being conducted through a vulnerability in old forms of Windows. Incidentally, by the way, even if you don't want to, update your fucking Windows. Because a lot of those patches and updates are about protection. It's about patches, performance increase, bug fixes, and closing vulnerabilities. But... This particular thing targeted specifically something that was revealed in Vault 7. We talked about Vault 7 that was presented through Wiki, WikiLeaks a couple of months ago, in which we found out that the CIA and the, 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 and the, and the NSA, National Security Administration, had a horde of cyber vulnerabilities in phones, computers, databases, etc. that they had been holding on to to use for their own devices. You know, for their own things that they wanted to look into, but those vulnerabilities, since they held them and didn't reveal them to anybody, meant that they were still open. Vault 7 was re- released, and then, whoop de doo and then immediately, within a few months, someone has exploited that with ransomware. And Microsoft came out and was like, this is your fault. You guys need to take responsibility for this, because none of this would have happened if you guys weren't skeevy, shady, greedy assholes. I mean... He, he used much more proper words than that, but those are the are words they, I'm using. Are they wrong? No, not really. I mean, the CIA and the NSA holding back uh, vulnerabilities is is really not okay. They're supposed to reveal those to the companies that they're associated with so that they can be closed, so that they protect the consumer. Which they didn't do. Yeah, no, they didn't whatsoever. But, I mean, so far, WannaCry has hit over 200,000 victims in 150 countries. As you stated earlier, they received over $50,000 in Bitcoin from this ransomware. Give us $300 or we'll wipe your computer. And Microsoft says, we already knew about this vulnerability. We already patched out this vulnerability. People didn't update their computers. Can't We can't force them to do that. But the other thing is, is that not, not many people knew about this vulnerability until... It was revealed that you still had access to it. Also, you want to know what makes me really sad? Some of the most common places that were hit were government organizations with the ransomware. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it, it makes me sad how behind in technology the general government always is. It It's funny because, like, my computer is aren't that much better than when I worked at Bosco's. And I was running on Windows 95 at Bosco's. Yep. Or no, 98. I'm sorry. Windows 98. So... Either way, if just just as a general rule, everybody, if you see get a weird email or something weird pops up and it has a weird link or a strange attachment or something, don't fucking click it. 
Like, unless it, like, unless you were expecting a fucking email from a very specific place and that's apparently who it is, even then, still be skeptical of clicking links and attachments and stuff in there. Otherwise, just, no, no, just delete it. All they want is information or money from you. And, you know, shit, you don't have the time for that. So. Yeah, all right. Um... Yeah, button, button time. Button, button, button. Six. Trump no longer... Sh- wait, hold on. Are you sure you want to press that button? I really hate, like, the next two. That's fair. I, I know. They're they're both bad. Uh, uh, Trump uh, no longer wants to talk about secret White House recordings. This is submitted by I- ir- Irrelevant to our politics. Now's the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? okay so yeah one of the things that trump said in an interview was that he had secret taped recordings of meetings he held with the for former fbi director he was talking about it on his twitter yeah he was putting him on blast and people are like dude that's highly illegal if former fbi director james comey apparently trump has unknown recordings from meetings he's had with them and was like it'd be a shame if someone heard what was on those tapes and everyone's like wait a minute wait t- t- wait did you wait, just tapes did you, did just, you just say just... that did you... and he's like no, what no i didn't say that yeah no you did i i, no. I, I got it right here um uh, we so... have it on tape we're gonna <laughs> it's a uh, we're gonna subpoena you for those thank you yeah yeah, uh, I, I bet they fucking started the subpoena process. Oh, yeah, they're working on it right now, because they're like, what's that? Really? Hmm. Oh, all right. Well, uh... Oh, and, and you just went into an interview where you admitted that you fired James Comey because of the Russia investigation? Trump is like a very unpleasant Hagrid. He's just sitting there, he's like, oh, I just said something. Oh, I should, I should not that. have said that. <laughs> Can we get that as a soundbite? Yeah, probably. Hagrid. If I'm not lazy. Yeah. It's not even that I'm lazy. I just have to remember. Yeah. Yeah. But, damn it, Trump. Even, we've even pinned it. It's true. Well, okay, not not Hagrid, but let's do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to remember today. I'm feeling a little wake today. Nothing should go wrong today. That's the opposite of me. That's... I, like, I can already feel the, the, the fucking sadness in my eyes. That is sleep. <laughs> the sadness in your eyes. Aww. Yeah, because I plan on getting home and, like, playing some video games. You did. And... You played some Eternal. Well, I guess. And then you watched some anime. And then you I fell was... asleep. I fell asleep watching the anime. And well, I, I, I guess Eternal it wasn't a very good the anime home. then. What? I said I guess it wasn't a very good anime then. It's it's actually not bad. It's it's pretty great. I enjoy the, this character in it. Was it uh, good enough who... to keep you awake? Oh, okay. That's not fair. All right, I fall asleep during literally anything. It's true, because you're weak. How dare you? I am not weak. I am just narcoleptic. Oh, sure. Is that it's what you my call character it? quirk, all right? Leave me alone. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's go on to the other thing you don't want to talk about. Fucking, you quirk-bashing son of a bitch. Five. Trump revealed highly classified information to Russian foreign minister and ambassador. All right, hit the button. Go to number four. Quick. <laughs> no. This was submitted by Squeeps. Our politics. So before you all like impeach, 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 uh, he, he didn't technically break any rules. So what it is is they were talking about the way that ISIS terrorists are functioning right now. There's information that we've received from a partner, um, and that that that's all the information we're given, is that this partner has provided the United States with information regarding how ISIS is using particularly laptop computers in their efforts of terrorization. And but, Trump but the big sh- thing is, they were like, hey, by the way, United States, we're not comfortable giving out this information yet, so don't give it out yet. Well, and the other thing is, is that, like, that partner, we probably buy this information from them and they would prefer you didn't just share it to other people so they can sell it to other people the other thing is is that this information we hadn't even shared with our allies yet uh newsflash russia is not considered one of our allies and so it not only does it hurt our relations with the people that supply us information it also hurts our relations with our allies now everyone the the question that was being asked if it was highly classified germany's pissed probably the, the the question that was then being asked is if it is highly classified information, is it wrong for him to share it? 
Not technically, because as the president of the United States, the president has very broad authority to declassify government secrets. So he can he can kind of just say whatever he wants to whoever he wants at any time, for the most part, obviously. And mm. it 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 does he's not breaking the law because it's at his discretion of which she, secrets to share with who. Now that said, uh, it, makes me, it makes me wonder what kind of like secrets we'd be getting if if Mr. Sanders was in office. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it. Would I mean, because just... I feel like he he would know which secrets are like, hey, I should not share these. Well, because people don't need to be worrying about aliens right now. It also makes me wonder how many secrets there are. I mean, I'm sure there's countless, but how many that Trump actually paid attention to? Well, I mean, there's at least a book of it. Haven't you watched National Treasure 2? I hate you. You are the worst. What? No. What? Do we need to go steal the Declaration of Independence to see if there's a map on the back and then friggin' hidden ink? No, that was the first movie. Yeah, I know. No, we're already on number two. Is we're already talking about the book. Illuminati and the dollar bill, motherfucker. Uh, I also haven't seen the second one, so I also don't give a damn. Actually, uh, I had recently started playing the Secret Wars and the Illuminati I, I had picked as my thing. Because uh, I found out that there was mad scientist hair, and it looked kind of like Rick's hair, except it's a le lot darker. So I sat there and tried my best to make Rick Sanchez. Good job. Power to you, sir. <laughs> Four. Canada passes law which grants immunity for <sighs> drug possession to those who call 911 to report an overdose. Hell yeah, this was submitted by Orange is... Oh wait, oh, never mind, it's not Orange is the New Black. Uh, New Black, it's on in ab to our world news. I have Sorry. no idea. Um, in between, on, yeah, I don't know, I tried. I don't, I don't know. So anyway, yeah, it's already passed. This isn't something that's being like voted on or anything. They already voted. It's already passed. If you call 911 to a report, 911, 911 to a report. <laughs> To report if it. you call 911 if you call you just gotta tell them I haven't forgotten yet God damn it you suck <laughs> if you call 911 to report an overdose you will not be charged with drug possession or anything along those lines because well I mean you call the hospital they I mean yeah the, no I, I agree with dicks this. I agree with this it's like hey now, I know your friend was dying, and you were really scared for their life, and you wanted to help them. But, uh, handcuffs. Yeah. It's like, it'll hopefully cut down on the amount of people just dropping people at the door to an ER. Yeah, pretty much. So, I'm, I'm, I'm hugely for this. It's like, hey, I, I, think, I think drug addiction, I'm of, of the opinion that drug addiction is a, um, a disease anyways. Mm-hmm. Um... You sh I feel like you really shouldn't be punishing people for their diseases, really. You should help them trying to reform their... Like, uh, you should help them treat their disease, and and, and a treatment for, for, drug, uh, for drug use is just rehabilitation in some ways. Um, maybe just a different kind of rehabilitation. Let's look, fix our problems with our system as is. But, um, no, I feel like this is great for that, because it's like, hey, we understand that, you know, you guys were doing something, and one of you got hurt doing it. We're not going to charge you for doing it, because that would be kind of fucked up. One of you is hurt. Let's just try and solve this problem. Right. Which so. is good. Which is good. Good on you, Canada. You're looking more appealing to me every day. Yeah, so thank you, Canada. Canada. Yeah. Hey, careful. Careful. I, I, there is actually a, a podcaster whose name is Jeff Canada. Really? Yep. Oh, that's kind of cool. Real cool guy. Real cool guy. You should uh, look up his stuff. He's real funny. I was uh, I was listening to the Drunks and Dragons podcast, and whenever they get um, mail from from as what they call it Canada, they um, they read it in a Australian accent. All right, that works. <laughs> Three woman carries twins for her sister who had nine miscarriages. Holy fuck! This is submitted by Smile Friend to our uplifting news. So you can't tell me what to do. What? A smile friend. <laughs> it's one quick thing. I cannot. So, like, if you are trying to have children and you have nine miscarriages, you are a stronger person than me. I'm just gonna like. I I don't know if I could emotionally slash mentally handle that at all. Yeah. Like that is rough. 
that is really rough. Um, but after they were, the doctors were like, you know, this probably isn't going to happen. They're like, they're like, one of the things that we could suggest though is a surrogate. It's your body that is the problem. So they took an embryo, they took an egg out of, you know, mom and a sperm out of dad and put it into mom's sister. And so mom's sister, uh, grew twins because they put two in there expecting only one to actually take uh because one of the one well because one of the embryos was in a poor state is how the doctor described it uh both of them worked both of them took so twins are being had although here's an interesting thing because of nebraska state law even though the egg and the sperm is mom and dad's the sister is technically the biological mother yeah and Carried her and or carried it. The actual, uh, the a- actual mother, the non-birthing yeah. mother, whose DNA it is, has to adopt her children from her sister. Isn't that weird? It's it's kind of dumb. There's not like a third. Well, I mean, it's understandable that there's not like a third section where it's for for, for things like that because I guess it's just not nearly as common. Even mm-hmm. though surrogacy is totally common. Yeah. Like my aunt, my aunt is a pretty much a career surrogate. She's she's been pregnant more times than I that I have fingers. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Cool. But either way, I I really hope that there's not some overwhelming cost. And because like when I hear the word adoption, my brain goes, uh, like at minimum there goes ten thousand dollars. Oh yeah. And I'm like oh. I I really hope that they don't have to pay ten grand to adopt their own kid back from their sister who gave birth to their kid for them because their body couldn't. Yeah, that that's kind of crazy. Like, hopefully, it's just like, yeah, it's your kid. Like, take it, yours, biologically, like, please, literally, please, biologically. Please, I, 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 her sister doesn't want kids. She's like, I just did it because, well, I, I wanted. Just fuck it. That's I want, my sister. Yeah, exactly. She's like, I wanted to help my sister, but I don't want kids. <clears throat> These aren't mine. Put out for my my family. Put out for my town. You know. Get that out of here. Quite literally, get it, get it out of me and into their arms. Yeah. My husband's mother adopted him, and she was a single mom. Private adoptions don't cost nearly as much, says Kendall. That's cool. Hopefully, that's a hope. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Two. Cable lobby conducts survey finds that Americans want net neutrality. This was submitted by Abscess Two to our news. Is this another part where we throw our heads back and laugh? Uh, yeah, sure, let's do it. Ready? ready? One, <laughs> two, oh. oh, you suck. I was getting ready to do it on three. Oh, well, you just you just do it after ready. All right, try again. Now's the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, so yeah, they conducted a survey that showed that roughly 61% of the nation strongly supports, uh, not strong, supports net neutrality, 18% opposes net neutrality, and 21% either doesn't know what it is or doesn't care. So, I mean... Uh, 18% of people oppose net neutrality? Yeah. So 18% of people work for big corporations. Thank you. Well, I mean, I know a lot of people that work for, like, GCI, and they're all still pro-net neutrality. Yeah, like, all right, so I'm just, I'm actually kind of surprised by these statistics that that many people are opposed to net neutrality. It keeps going. I feel like it's, I feel like it's mostly through misinformation. Probably, and that's one of the things that those big companies want to, you know... Exploit? Uh, yeah. And continue to pander? I mean, it's no different than, like, friggin' PETA and the stuff that they throw out there that are just hoping to either use shock factor or vague information to get support. Like, you, I like I liked your message, right? We can't treat animals that way. But at the same time, your execution of said method is literally the worst. Yep. It's like, shit, I love communism on paper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Communism every on fucking, paper is amazing. Every time someone's tried to implement it, it's been a horrible train wreck. It's true. Um, uh, going into that, also, people were asked, you know, do you feel like the government should have some level of control over regulating or, or monitoring the marketplace? 12 people believe, 12% of people, that there was over 2,000, 2,194 uh, is how many people did, took the survey. 12% of them believe that the government should, the government itself should set the prices, terms, and conditions for internet access. 53% said that the government should have a, a light touch approach, meaning that they monitor it, but they only get involved if it appears that customers, consumers are being harmed. 25% said they should stay all the way out, and 10% says, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. 
Kendall's like, that's why you do anarchy, Nathan. Anarchy. <laughs> anarchy. I don't know what God. that means, oh but I God. like it. My anarchy phase was really fun. That almost got me kicked out of school. Here's an interesting one for you, though, Nathan. Like, all of these other ones, I'm not surprised. Like, uh, I, most most of, you know, the populace supports net neutrality. Uh, a good number of them believe that the government shouldn't directly control it, but should have a say in the matter to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand. So, the other thing, though, is they were also asked, voters say, they were asked, should um, internet access be considered a public utility? Yes. Okay. It's gotten to that point. 33% said yes, the internet should be a public utility that is regulated by the federal government. 51% said no. What? Yeah, I was very surprised by that. And then 16% said, I again, I don't know what you're talking about. That's interesting. Yep, so people want net neutrality, and they want there to be some level of surveillance o over the consumer market, but they don't want the federal government to be directly involved. I can, all right, so I, can, I guess I can understand that, but at the same time, like, there are some things that I feel like it's all right for the federal government to be involved. I'm no longer an anarchist. Like, I, I'm okay with the federal government in small doses. Well, and also, like... But, I mean, okay, so maybe I, I guess I am an anarchist, right? Internet's also so expensive, unnecessarily so. I mean, when you have companies like Comcast that are reporting $4 billion a month in profit, not net revenue, not before they've paid bills, no, $4 billion a month in profit. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Kendall, you're purposely disadvantaging groups of people. Internet should be a human right. Um, and denying access to people access means you are denying equal education for everyone. And at this point, it, it's true. Shit. Now I want to sing Anarchy in the UK. We'll see what happens. I mean, there's still going to be a fight going on with the FCC over net neutrality alone, much less it becoming a federally regulated public utility. Yay, I guess. I am an antichrist. I am an anarchist. Don't know what I want, but I know how to get it. Oh, that song. We're waiting for more. No. Oh. Fine, I'm over then. it. You're over it. I'm, cool. All right. I can't. I realize that I'm. I'm not. Like, I can't do Johnny Rotten. Like, That's fair. Not many people can. One. One million hours of UK police time a year is wasted enforcing cannabis prohibition. It was submitted by Mania for Beatles to Our World News. Yep, the liberal... Oh man, it's just like, it's just like here. Yep, the liberal Democrats of the United Kingdom are tired of cannabis being banned. Um, there, so... In 2015, there was an estimated... 87... Th no, not estimated. I have an estimation for you later. So... In 2015, there were 87,247 cases related to cannabis regulation in the United Kingdom. Each case costs approximately 2,256 pounds. That means in 2015, roughly somewhere around 31 million pounds and 1,044,180 police hours were spent trying to regulate marijuana. That's ridiculous. Holy fuck. Now, if you are curious what that is in U.S. dollars, uh, that is, uh, how many numbers is that? That is $40 million. Do you want to know what's more of a gateway drug than cannabis? Uh, aspirin. I don't know. Scientifically proven. Tobacco is more of a gateway drug. I believe it. So Because tobacco is a stimulant. They were looking at it, and they're like, okay, seriously... Cannabis is already freely available and widely used. Like, it's everywhere. You're not getting rid of it. You can't anymore. So many people have it. So many people do it. Like it's it's like it's like God's miracle plant. I can understand Rastafarians. Well, and they're like, you know what? Th this is silly. So they're going to be pushing forward a initiative to completely legalize it across the entire United Kingdom. There's going like to be. What? It, it baffles me. You can use the entire plant. Yeah. Like, it makes great fibers for clothes as well as other things. 
It makes uh, great oils and seeds. You can use the, the hemp seeds for, for bird feeders, and birds will purposely pick out the hemp seeds before any other seed because it helps make their coat glossy. Um, it will... Um, uh, you, you can use hemp oils for a lot of things, which is fucking great for your, your skin, honestly. So here's what they're proposing. Uh, they are going to be pushing forward legislation that will restrict the market to over 18. Um, they will make, they will limit THC content, which oh, is shit over here. It's 21 up. Um, they'll limit THC content and require that all cannabis products ha still contain the regular amount of CBD that it would have. Mm -hmm, sure. Because they, they, they're like, that needs to be in there period, because it also CBD also largely will help negate the harmful effects of THC. Right, uh, no. i.e. you're breathing in smoke most of the time you're consuming it. And they also have pledged that if it goes legalized, um, up to 1 billion pounds of taxes generated from it each year will go purely towards education and treatment. So, all right, when you first said 1 billion pounds, my first thought was 1 billion pounds of, of marijuana. No. And I was like, that's a lot of marijuana you're putting towards treatment. No. And I'm kind of okay with that. 1 billion pounds of currency. They're like, hey, you're feeling depressed? Let's have some smoke. So, yeah. It, it. I mean, assuming that this doesn't have immense amounts of pushback and goes through Parliament without too much problem, uh, it'll be legal in the United Kingdom. Whole country. They're tired yeah, of fighting that's, it. that's what's up. It's a waste Including, of time and money. It, does that include Wales and Scotland as well? I'm uh, probably. I, I would imagine. I think so. So here's Ireland, the maybe. Here's the thing. Is that, like, I understand why you might be opposed to some substances being used, okay? Mm -hmm. However, and, and, and I, I realize this is like a silly, like, childlike argument of, but everyone's doing it. But if you're the government, and we know that government officials use it, and like, like let, let, fuck it, let's turn it into something bad. It's fucking heroin. You got some legislators... Dude, no, no, we have, we have a pretty bad... Oh, it, in uh, in Anchorage, it is now cheaper to purchase uh, black market uh, heroin and other opioids than it is to purchase over-the-counter marijuana. Yeah, I believe it. Because of the way our taxes work up here and the way um, and the way everything works, it comes out to a forty dollar on the black market sack of weed. That you're you're spending upwards to eighty eight dollars on in a in a store. Sure, that makes sense. So, so like, I can understand some markups, but at the same time, it's, like, you're also, like, neutering yourself because Alaska's really dumb, and we're like, hey, we're going to make our rules from the ground up, and we're not going to look at, at other places where it succeeded. And Well, the other problem, though, is that you have to, like, it is succeeding in some places, but the problem is you have to include a lot of specific legislation because you are going against the federal government right now. Sure. But with that, though, like, let's say replace all of this marijuana stuff with something bad, uh, cocaine, heroin. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to do it with mushrooms or LSD because those aren't actually that bad, as bad as people think it is. No, no. Make it something bad. Fucking, fucking make it you heroin. You want to make it worse? Uh, okay. Uh, not peyote. Peyote is pretty great. Um, heroin. Um, sure. Heroin. Uh, meth. Meth. So here's the thing. Is that there have been societies, large ones in the past, where there were very strong substances that were just widely used because that was just what happened. Like that, that, and we know now the medical detriments of them. But if we were sitting in a point now where like everyone in the world is fucking using heroin, but it's illegal, eventually at a certain point, don't you just fucking give up? Yeah. Even if it's bad, like, what are you going to do? Arrest everyone? You're not everyone? stopping anybody. Like, you're just putting people in in prisons and you're, you're just crowding it. And then people get it in prisons anyways. Like, we had we had a... A um, lawyer up here. A lawyer up here get caught trying to smuggle drugs into the, the, um, the, the federal prison, I think. That is a... How much are you being paid? Like... Well, okay, so... Let I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real honest with you. I had seen her in the courthouse, and I had watched her go from regular upstanding citizen to haggard and drug uh, drug used um, lawyer, essentially. Like I mean, shit. 
So she just fell. Yeah, she she definitely fell through. Okay. Well, either way. Um, but that being said, she she's held her she's held her bard uh, number for a while. But she's also prior. She had priors for domestic violence. So. Sure. At this point, though, it's just a matter of time. The the writings on the wall and engraved in the stone that the wall is that the paint is on is that. What do you think? Three more years? Five? For all drugs or marijuana? Mar- marijuana, marijuana. I, 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 marijuana specifically. I'm gonna give it five maximum. Yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna exceed five years, in my opinion. Like at this point, not like, unless we have some ass backwards like marching shit, like what Jeff Sessions is trying to do. Yeah, which I mean, the the Congress is keeping him away from that, so. That's good. We don't need any more funds in in that area well, because I- like. And also, uh, like in the war on drugs, you're not even like you're not even targeting what what what's really hurting people. You're targeting mostly marijuana sales. Ninety percent of of drug crime where you get arrested and everything for is for marijuana, mm-hmm. the most benign fucking drug ever, next to like aspirin. Yeah. Except you can overdose from aspirin. You can. You in in order to overdose from THC, you would have to sit there and smoke eight hundred joints in fifteen minutes. Could you, is there a way to get, like, liquid THC? There is a way to get liquid THC. Could you just drink, like, a half gallon of it? Well, okay, you would have to heat it up, because a lot of the time, all right, so dabs is pretty much liquid THC. Right, it's but it, it's like, a butane process. it's like a resin, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of not liquidy. Okay. I mean, I guess you could do, there's, like, this oil bit that, that people give you, pe- other people in syringes, that you, um, you don't shoot it up. It's um, it's an easy applicator for your dab machine. You just drop a couple dabs onto it. Okay. Um, so I guess you could sit there and drink that, but like, like it's not I, gonna get you. I, 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 I'm just trying to look for the extreme of because like you, you, you are not physically able to smoke eight hundred. Right. What? So in order for you to do it, I feel like you would have to get a giant big gulp full of that that uh liquid thc stuff yeah and you would have to sit there and chug it and even then you would probably die from the butane in it either that or you just throw up yeah i just i don't know it's it's not something that that people really overdose from people will get freaked out and will have heart attacks and everything if if they've had if they have a chance of having heart attacks as is but that happens with a lot of stuff. If you sit there and, and you have a risk of heart attacks and you chug, like, energy drinks... Yeah, I, was, I was about to say, hey, Nathan, lift up that can that's on your desk. Exactly. Like, I don't have risk of heart heart attacks. It's, I mean, heart attacks run in my family, but I don't... It, they're all, like, much older individuals in my family who get them. Sure. So, I mean... I... I it's it's really weird. It's like LSD and and mushrooms, the psilocybin and the um the fuck what the lysogenic acid I think it it is uh, for LSD. It's, uh-huh. it, it's incredibly hard to overdose from those as well. The the thing that kills people is fucking dickheads. When you have someone who is on LSD or or mushrooms, people will want to like freak them out because it's funny because they saw it in a movie, right? Don't freak those individuals out because that it, their heart is already pumping like crazy and working overtime. If you freak them out, there's a chance that their heart will just stop, no matter your age. Sure. Like, people need to understand that that people who are really on acid or really on mushrooms or really on a lot of hallucinogens, you need to be very careful of because if if you're not careful of them, they can just if you scare them too much, fucking dead. All right, so, uh, if you didn't already... I'm Mr. Meeseeks! Look at me! Nathan, what'd you care about in the last 72 hours? Uh, I played D&D with my normal Saturday group, right? Sure. Uh, and we had an almost, uh, party wipe. Good job. Uh, and it was not because of me, because I'm the DM. Sure. Kind of because of me. Whatever. So, the week prior... I'm, I'm gonna... Huh? I said lay it on me. Okay, so the week prior, um, they're fighting these cultists of this thing called Sithoga, which is a frog deity. Um, And the cultist used on the ninja frog, because there's a a Gripply, which is a half-frog individual. Okay. Um, 
and they used this ability on him, and he crit failed a um, a will save in order to um, six, to in order to not have to do it. But the guy was sat there and told him to murder his um, murder his all of his companions, right? And he has to do this action within four days, otherwise he takes a fuckload of damage or something, right? So the first night after that, which would which we had stopped, and they they came back the next week, and they all decided to become almost all of them decided to become were rats because there's that this option because they found a were rat and the were rat was grateful and was like, hey, I can make you were rat. Um, so they had killed him, and they were like, I'm we're gonna go to sleep. Who's gonna take first watch? And um, and the the Gripley who has to kill everyone was like, I'll take first watch. And everyone's like, yeah, okay, because they don't they don't know he's he's supposed to kill them all. It's a so, great idea. He was going to go around and coup de gras them and just stab them in the neck and kill all of them, right? Sure. Well, I rolled to see if he encounters anything that night, and he did. He encountered five assassin vines, which are uh, slow-moving things. They they have, like, a movement of five. But if they're, they're in, like, an undergrowth area, which they were in, they have incredible stealth. So they crept through the area, and one of them approached the healer and immediately one-shotted the healer. He went for a coup de gras, and they roll a d8, and they add 7 to it. And for a coup de gras, they, the opposing player has to beat the damage plus 10 on a, a DC. It's like a it's a fort save or something. Um, and he was the Oridin, so he had a, a pretty high fortitude save, but he rolled a 6. And I had rolled max damage. So he outright just fucking died. And from that point on, these assassin vines marched on the entire party. And the only people to get out of the assassin vines was the guy who has to kill everyone, the the gun uh, mage who no longer had his gun because the guy who has to kill everyone stole it, um, the necromancer, and the sorcerer. The sorcerer got away from everything because he turned invisible and ran and hid for four days. So that because he he had a spellcraft check and made sure that he knew that enthralling only took like a, a couple days, right? Well, the 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 person with the gun couldn't get their gun, so they decided to run. And the the frog guy systematically sat there and hunted him down, and, and was shooting him with three bolts from a crossbow a turn. Um, and then uh, he was like, "I have to chase after the necromancer who has a head start. He's faster than the, ne the necromancer because he has boots of of striding and springing." Uh, he then gets to the door. The necromancer hops on his zombie dire hippo, and he's just like. Oppa, yip yip, and he starts riding away, and it's like he, he can run 300 feet. And so the frog guy's like, Well, shit, I can do that. And he sat there and chugged a potion of haste and fucking booked it 300 feet in the same direction. And they sat there and played this cat and mouse game of shooting him with, with crossbow bolts from, from being hidden. And he's like, Where the fuck is he coming from? Oh, God. So he's like, All right, hippo, kill him. And then the, the hippo, and then he committed suicide. So the hippo had to to try and kill the, the frog, but he couldn't find him. So now there's just this roaming zombie dire hippo trying to find this frog. I like that the dire hippo speaks kobold. I mean, it, it understood any language that the, um, the, uh, the, the person who had summoned it had speak, had spoken. Oh, neat. So it was like it was it, he had put points into its intelligence for some fucking reason. Because why not? Um, anyways, but yeah, now there's this giant fucking dire hippo who can pop up at any time and just murk someone. Do it. What they're, what they're gonna do is they're they're trying to find this this frog hemoth, and if if you don't know what a frog hemoth people, it's a massive frog. One person will take up one square in D and D, and this frog will take up four. It's like it's like three or four. The hippo takes up a three by three bit. Um, but the frog's also pretty huge. But it's this giant-ass frog that has tentacles flying out of its back like some Cthulhu beast, and it tries to eat, hop on you and eat you. So they're trying to hunt that thing down, and when they find it, I'm going to have that thing show up with the frog, and they're just going to be like, oh, fuck, it's a dire hippo and a frog. Oh, no. And this is the things that we are afraid of in the dark. Not not demons or, or, you know, skeletal sorcerers or mind flares that elite your brain. Nope. You wake up and you scream, Ah, oh, Tarask! Nope. You are scared of hippos and frogs.
Dude, I'm legitimately scared of ropers. Ropers are fucking terrifying. Oh, Giant noted. dickheaded rape things. Noted. I'll remember this, Nathan. That being said, my character now can grapple a roper like a motherfucker. Not if they grapple you first. Uh, sure, they'll grapple me first, and then I get a counter grapple. Until they pin you. Uh, I can get out of that. You just wait. Not if, I don't know. I have I have studded leather brawling armor. Sure. Which gives me bonuses to grapple, as well as the armband of the brawler, which gives me bonuses to grapple, as well as being a brawler myself, which gives me an insane grapple. Good. Well, it'll be it'll be a. Fun I mean, it's no Tatori monk. I kind of miss my lucha dwarf, but you know, whatever. It, it'll be a fun. It'll be a fun wrestling match. Mm -hmm. Anyway, though, uh, I don't have anything right now, um, which is fine because we need to get out of here because we're at 55 minutes going on. Yeah, let me talk more about D&D. &D. <laughs> Damn it, Nathan. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, everybody, if you'd like to help support the show, please follow us on all of the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We go live every night on Facebook, Monday through Thursday. I realize I said every night, Monday through Thursday, whatever. You get the idea. Um, at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So nine Pacific Daylight Time? Would I, is that what I said? No. Oh, okay. I so nine o'clock if you're in if if you're in Alaska, eleven if you're in Colorado, twelve uh twelve midnight if you're in like Oklahoma, and if you're farther east than that, then it's one a.m. We're we're technically a late night show. Either way, um yeah, if you want to watch the show live and if you've seen or heard me tack attack, and it's because I've been talking to people in the chat room like Kendall, you, we we read out stuff that she says quite a bit because she's a very vocal person. Otherwise, though, no, uh, Kendall's like one. Like, I, I want to get her actually on a Skype chat sometime and get her on the show because I, I enjoy the the commentary Kendall puts forth. Like her, she's she's brought people in to listen to the show too. She brought in Kirsten. Kirsten's a pretty pretty good uh voice as well. Is Kendall here in Anchorage? Yeah. Well, drag her over to your house. I'm sure. I mean, look at the camera. There's room for another person right to your right. Oh, dude, so I kind of want to set up another ca a camera right here so that we have, like, either way, I, I want to figure it out to where I'm not always looking at the camera so that when, when you say something incredibly stupid, I can just, like... Do I say something incredibly stupid that often? At least once a show. Damn it, okay. Well... I feel. That, that being said, that's a lot less than the amount of stupid shit I say. That's, you're not wrong. Like, holy shit. You can also download the show to take with you later if you would like to. If you're on an, uh, if you're on an Apple device, it, there's a straight-up podcast app through iTunes. Otherwise, there's Google Play and Stitcher for our, all the other devices. And we're probably on most of the other things, too, like Blueberry and things like that automatically loaded us so, in there. We have a lot of people in Anchorage that would, would be – well, not a lot of people. But some people would be interested, like – um, I talked to Corey, Corey Anderson about it. He said he's really down. He's also a streamer on Twitch, so he can, um, potentially bring in some of his Twitch streams. Sure. Uh, and he gets like three or 400 people every time he streams. Cool. Um, and then Kendall, of course, and then Andrew Walter is Matt's dad, uh, has, has asked me a couple times if he wanted to. I actually kind of wanted to start a podcast with him about, uh, reviewing actual horror movies. Sure. Um, because he's, he watches a lot of them and he's really knowledge, uh, knowledgeable in the field. And I feel like I'm, a, I'm decently knowledge in the field. I'm enough to like kind of slip by and, and, and pass. So we just sit there, watch a horror movie, review it, laugh at it, um, you know, just, but not shitty horror movies. Like we're trying to find actual horror movies, and I wanted to call it something like the the Weekly Scream. But... Sure. Well, if you need help getting stuff set up, let me know. I'm here. Yeah, I just have to figure. I I want to start one other project like immediately, but I have to figure out which one it is. That's fair. Let me know. I'll help you yeah. out. Otherwise, everybody. Um... If you'd like to help support us financially, patreon.com slash daily internet. That's what allowed us to purchase our new intro this month as well as the intro music. If you didn't and see then we'll it. And then uh, we'll get Michael to rap. That's at $100. Once we hit $100 a month, I will do a rap 150 See all that glorious fur on Nathan's face? If you get it to $150 a month, that's coming off. I was also thinking if I have to shave my face, I'll probably shave around the sides too and start pulling it back and braiding it down the back and just keep growing it out. Do it. So that I can look more like Ragnar Lothbrook from Vikings season two, I think, is when he was doing that. Season it'll look like season one initially, sure. where it's just kind of like the top and then like a small ponytail. Yeah, are you? But gonna, eventually, it'll get bigger. Are you gonna dye it blonde? No. Why not? Because mm. I like my hair brown. Whatever. And this is the first time in my life I can say that. Normally, like when I was a kid, 
I was like, fuck, I really want to dye my hair bright orange and be cool. No, I actually kind of dig it. I like the, the, the brown color of it. Good. But it'll be like, it'll be pulled back like this, and then all of this will be gone, and, and this will just be a giant braid going all the way down and back. Do it. So. All right. And then when this will grow back in, I'll, I'll look proper Viking. I'll have to take lots of pictures proper while it's gone. Proper savage. Though. I want to be a god, godless heathen or a godful heathen if I have a lot of them. I have to take lots of pictures while the fur is off, though. Yeah, yeah, I bet you do. Show, show people how attractive you could be. God, I, I'm not. I look like a sweet babby. A, a sweet, a babby? ugly babby with a decent chin. Like, I, I kind of like my jawline. Well, I can't see it right now, so it doesn't matter. You're damn right you can't, and there's a good reason. <laughs> all my man is in the way you know all right everybody that is your 287th dose of the internet i am michael schwan and i'm nathan wood and don't get, get eliminated. eliminated i love it and hate it all at the same time bye <laughs>